Digital cameras have preset auto modes which work well in about 80% of situations for amateurs, but there are times when a camera needs to be put in full manual mode and some mathematical problem solving gets invoked, especially if you want to get your camera off auto mode and improve your shooting. For those of you that don't like math, I hate to break it to you, but photography is, in part at least, a lot of math. The main way we experience that math is the fractions and numbers involved in the amount of light let into the camera via shutter speed and aperture and the sensitivity the sensor or film has to the light. Hang on to the end of this video because I'm going to explain five different mathematical formulas used in shooting photos and videos with your DSLR and mirrorless cameras and how to use them to improve your shooting work. Hi. I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. If you like what you see in this video, stick around to the end because I've got a couple of photography, video production, filmmaking, and editing freebies, and even some training courses I'll tell you about that will definitely help to improve your shooting and editing work and help grow your business through earned media exposure. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, and by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. If you like what you see, Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video every Wednesday. I've done other videos on using math to improve the composition of your work, and I'll link to those in the description below as well. As far as math goes, I know that 1 250th of a second shutter speed at an aperture of f8 equals both 1 2000th at f2.8 and 1 30th at f22. All three are identical exposures in terms of how much light they allow in to expose your image or scene. However, all three will yield very different results in your image with respect to the depth of field. When you understand how your camera works, you can understand how to manipulate the math to create stunning images and scenes. I use the following five simple formulas every time I pick up my camera. By the way, in case you do miss something, I'll list all of the formulas that I discuss in the description below for you as well, so you can copy them and write them down and you'll be able to use them as you need. Number one is eliminate camera shake with the focal length rule. This is the most important formula to use and understand if you want to eliminate camera shake and the soft focus images that it produces. While I want to believe that I can handhold my 300 millimeter lens for a quarter of a second exposure, the resulting soft images are proof that I am wrong every single time. If I notice my images aren't tack sharp, I double check my shutter speed and adjust it within the confines of this very simple formula. This rule is known as the reciprocal rule. The formula is 1 over the focal length equals the minimum shutter speed that I can shoot at. Basically, this means the shutter speed should match or exceed the lens focal length. In other words, if you wanted a sharp, shake-free shot with a 50 millimeter lens, your shutter speed would be 1 50th of a second, or a faster speed than that. In my 300 millimeter lens example that I talked about above, the shutter speed would need to be 1 300th and above and so on. If you can't increase your shutter speed, then you want to shoot with a tripod. Number two is the Sunny F16 rule. As a child, my parents used to give me a handheld yellow and black Kodak disposable camera whenever we went on vacation or went anywhere, in fact, because they know that I enjoyed photography and they wanted to encourage that. Every image turned out about the same. Everything was in focus and each exposure was pretty much spot on. The reason is those instant cameras followed the sunny 16 rule blueprint, which is on a bright sunny day, F16 plus one over the ISO for the shutter speed will equal the proper exposure. In essence, this means to get the correct exposure on a normal sunny day, shoot at a shutter speed 
of 1 over the ISO at F16. So, with ISO 100 dialed into the sensor, the correct exposure on a normal sunny day will be 1 100th of a second at F16. This handy rule of thumb is very helpful as it gives you an idea of where to start dialing in a manual exposure. The sunny F16 rule is incredibly accurate as well. These same camera settings also apply to capturing the surface detail of a full moon. But don't expect to get any light to appear in the foreground, but that same exposure will give you a nice shot of the moon if you shoot at night. Did you know that the rule also corresponds to every other lighting scenario that you might find outdoors? Here's a handy guide to this. The Sunny F16 rule tells you what aperture to switch to as lighting situations change from the brightest sunlight to the deepest dusk. In every case, the corresponding shutter speed will always remain 1 over the ISO. So for example, very bright sun, snow, or sand would be F22. A normal sunny day, F16 like we discussed. Hazy or lightly cloudy, F11. Cloudy day, F8. An overcast day, F5.6. Sunset or shade, F4. Dusk, F2.8. Part of the process of becoming a better photographer is taking control of your camera and its controls. Use this guide to know where to start dialing in manual exposures in any outdoor lighting situation. It will give you confidence and help you feel like you're a master of manual exposure. Number three, F8 and be there. Legendary photojournalist Arthur Fellick coined the phrase F8 and be there in the 1920s. It's a sound formula because to make a successful image, you need to do the following. Stand in front of an interesting subject and capture the subject in focus. F8 and be there is an expression popularly used by photographers to indicate the importance of taking the opportunity for a picture rather than being too concerned about using the best technique. In short, this formula means that if you set your aperture to F8 and take a guess at the shutter speed, but nothing under 1 60th of a second, you will get an acceptable image. It may not be pretty, but it will work. Although this phrase has been around for about 100 years now, it's still sound advice that I use when I'm shooting multiple assignments or subjects in a short period of time. With the camera set on aperture priority mode and set to F8, my shutter adjusts automatically to the ambient light and the aperture allows for a photographer-friendly margin of error when focusing. Number four, the inverse square law for lighting. The definition of this law, that the quality or strength of light is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of the subject from the light source, sounds scary enough, but it's quite easy to put into practice. The formula is 1 over the distance between the light and a subject squared is the amount of light on the subject. The formula is a fast way of saying whenever the distance between the subject and the light source is doubled, the subject receives one quarter of the light. In layman's terms, that means the intensity of a light source will decrease exponentially as you move the light further away from your subject. I've actually done a much more detailed video on the inverse square law. And I'll link to that in the description below because it's an important topic and one that you should understand. Finally, number five, the 600 star rule. Star photography is booming. The first decision I make when shooting stars is whether I want them frozen in place or streaking across my frame. Quite often I choose the former because I simply love the look of the Milky Way in a silhouetted landscape. To determine the longest possible shutter speed before the stars will appear in motion, I use the following simple formula. 600 over the focal length equals the maximum shutter speed. The rule states that the maximum length of an exposure with stars that does not result in star streaks is achieved by dividing the effective focal length of the lens into the number 600. Therefore, a 50 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera would allow for 600 divided by 50 equals 12, which translates into a 12 second exposure before streaks are noticeable. It's pretty easy to understand once you know what it means. However, if you do want streaks of stars, then go longer than 12 seconds in your exposure time. If this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, what is your favorite photography mathematical formula? 
leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd love to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the info I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,470 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thanks for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, and video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get the cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up and editing video in under two hours, and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors. And now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of video without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you take advantage of mainstream media, so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you and other information if you want to find out more. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you may know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experience. You'll find a link to that group in the description below as well, so feel free to join it where you can learn even more.